此时，请勿强行上下汽车。哎。The next station is Xiangyu Lu Bay. One of the things I think about um, what what are the things that I'm going to miss from China when I move to Denmark, and I think I might miss the the kind of growth that we we're seeing in, in the city. And it seems like every two years there's a two or three new lines, train lines that open up. And being a train nerd that I am, what I like to do is I like to go out these train lines and just see the landscape and for what it is. So today we're taking the S1 line, and the S1 line basically connects the airport to uh, Nanjing South Station. And a portion of it is above ground, and that's that's the part that's interesting. So if I pan over, we can just see how open it is. Just open fields right now, but I would imagine in a few years this is all going to change. Um, and if you could stick a time lapse. In this area, just to see the growth, that would be quite fascinating. So, I got off at the station before uh, the rail station, the main south station. The reason I got off at that station, I got off here, is because. This is the station where the the new British school is. So I figured I'd just take a walk around and take a look at it from the outside. Uh, I haven't told anyone. So if I had told Luke, Luke works at that school, um, then maybe I could have gone in and had a tour. <clears throat> but I'm just checking it out. Their campus is called Mountain View, and there's a if we look to the there's a little hill up there, and this is not the campus. This is a preschool right here, and the school is nestled into the into the mountain. It's a different style of campus compared to Nanjing International School. It's so very modern in the form of construction, whereas Nanjing International School has a Chinese style of building, and typically. With the local population, they prefer um, this style of architecture. They prefer a modern-looking uh, building versus uh, what we see at our school, which is the Chinese-style building. So there we are. Just uh, walk past the uh, British School of Nanjing. Maybe next time a bit or more organized. See if I can get uh, Luke to give a tour of the place. So, since you last saw me, there have been many um, bus rides. Some worked and some didn't. But I'm in an area that used to be a lot of houses, old-style houses. And you can see the remnants of it over there. And what it looks like they're doing is they're demolishing a lot of the old buildings around here and then recreating what Nanjing was like, I think, before, I sort of a few hundred years ago or so, or maybe before the Japanese came in and did a lot of destruction. Because there's next to this wall, there's a huge tower, and then I could see like what looked like a um, red walled sort of temple type of structure similar to the Ming tombs. The Ming tombs have this type of construction too. So, oh, there you can see some of that construction I was talking about where you can see a temple and a red type of building and there's the tower I was talking about and then over there is uh, the Nanjing wall but that little that little hole over there that's the that's the traditional historical gate. That was like one of the few entrances into the into Nanjing in the historical times. You can see over to the right there's a non-traditional gate. That's where everyone goes through right now. And you can see there's the moat. 
I'm gonna try to have lunch at Motu. It's a New Zealand hamburger place and they've got fantastic Cajun fries and they've got local beer from, not local beer, not from Nanjing. They got micro beer um, from New Zealand, which is quite tasty. Here, let's go up these stairs. These are definitely old. This is the typical, you see this type of brick kind of structure. That is brick. That, that's something when I see a black style brick, I think of China. These things I love. These are reproduced, but I think they've done a good job. Because it's all made out of wood. And they've got the original style tile. Just look at the beams on that. It's just, I love that type of, I love it when it's as authentic as possible. Oh, I don't know if you can recognize that. That's a, that's a, that's a coffee shop. World famous coffee shop from Seattle, Starbucks. And it'd be interesting, I can't read Chinese characters, but I wonder if that says Starbucks. I know it's Starbucks because you've got the iconic um, umbrellas that are outside and it says Starbucks. The entrance of, the, of this touristy area is right up there. And this is a tip for anyone that is planning to live and work in Nanjing and you need to find the New Zealand hamburger place called Motu. It's right at the entrance over here. I'm going to pan to pan over and you're going to see it. See, it says Motu. You got an ice cream place and then upstairs, that's where we'll go. So, I'm at the top floor. You can see the view I have. I'm going to see what the spelling of Fujimao is. Fujimao, maybe Fujimao. At night, it would be a whole different scene. Everything's lit up because it is a lantern, lantern festival. So those dragons there would be all lit up. You'll hear random hellos because they want to speak to me. They want to have some sort of conversation. If you're hungry for stinky tofu, this is the place to get it. All that black, that's a uh, stinky tofu. I've been working on trying to enjoy that for the last few years. I can eat it, but I don't have a craving for it. Not yet. Stinky tofu, what is it? S smells like horse, horse poop. And when you eat it, it doesn't have that taste but I swear it has a bit of that taste I'm, I, I see it as the blue cheese of Asia and I imagine the first time anyone has blue cheese they would spit it out and the first time anyone smells stinky tofu that's the last thing you want to think about is eating it you're thinking that belongs in a barn maybe fertilizer that's about it <laughs> 